David, this entire story of sadistic homosexual slayings would almost appear to be fiction, scripted with the full intention of shocking readers over and over again. It's that hard to believe. So many lives involved, so many killed over such a long period of time, and all of it going undetected. But it's not fiction. It's very real. A deadly conspiracy now listed as one of the most horrifying crimes in this century. When the digging was finally completed in this shed, 17 bodies had been recovered. According to the owners of the boat storage, Dean Coral had always been prompt in paying his rent on this boat stall, which he had for nearly three years. Recently, he had been politely asking the owners if they didn't have another stall for rent. He said his was getting too crowded. 17 bodies, shocking, terrifying, and yet there were still more to be found. There could be dozens of other bodies, and the only man who could possibly tell the entire grisly story was Dean Coral, and he was dead. Hey everybody, welcome back to Enchanted Bayou. My name is Cassandra and I have had a lot of requests from you guys, a lot of requests about talking to um, Dean Coral again. So I made my way back over to his cemetery where he is buried and I am actually not exactly where his grave is at. Um, I know that they have taken his marker off because they were having so many problems with people vandalizing it, ordering fake flowers, things like that. Um, so I'm not exactly over his marker, but I figured he's come to me before. He can come over here now. I'm actually not too far from where he is at. Um, you can see too, it's over by the road and there's a lot of cars out right now. And so I didn't want that to mess with the spirit box because I figured we would come out here and do a spirit box and talk to Dean again because you guys have been asking for it. So I didn't want that to interfere. So we are just a little ways down the way. And he has actually come over and talked to me uh, last time I think it was when I was recording in that small little mausoleum over there. Okay, so if you don't know much about Dean Coral, I have actually made two other videos on him. Um, but let me give you a brief history. You can always go back and watch those videos and learn a lot more about it. But Dean Coral was discovered that he was a serial killer and he mostly killed boys ranging from I guess seven or so into their early 20s and he did it in horrific ways. No one knew he was a serial killer except um, one of his I guess you could say apprentices and he was shot by his apprentice in August of 1973. So basically the story goes is that Dean was also called the Candyman and he would go out and talked to different boys and everyone knew him in town, um, everyone got along with him, thought he was a nice guy. His parents owned the candy shop so he worked in the candy shop a lot of the time to help them out. And he would bring out candy for the boys of the neighborhood, well the children of the neighborhood. And he would also talk to the teenage boys and say that they could come over and smoke pot with them and, and all that. And so anyway they would come over to his house or they would get in his van and he would do horrific things to them and many of the bodies he buried in um, his boat storage shed some he buried at a cabin that he had in North Houston others he buried over on the beach out on Port Bolivar Island and that's kind of the story of Dean uh, how he got found out was he had two apprentices David Brooks and Elmer Wayne Henley and Henley actually had brought a girl over one time along with another boy Dean was very upset with Henley for bringing the the girl over so Dean basically was gonna kill Henley too. Uh, Henley outsmarted him and ended up getting the gun away from him and then shot him. After that Henley told the police of where the 27 boys that he had helped Dean lure and kill he told him where the bodies were. Now are there more 
boys, no one really knows. Uh, that's just the number of boys that Elmer Wayne Henley remembers uh, and knew where their bodies were located at, but no one really knows how long Dean Coral was killing before Elmer Wayne Henley came along or before David Brooks came along. Elmer Wayne Henley and David Brooks, it's believed, were going to be two of his victims, but for some reason, Dean took a liking to them and actually paid them to bring their friends and help get other boys to Dean's house and to kill them. So I guess you could say the quick story of Dean Coral. Um, many serial killers cremated and their ashes are with their family. They don't typically bury them in cemeteries where people know about. Um, however, Dean Coral is buried right here in Pasadena, which is a little town outside of Houston. Now, like I said, his grave marker of course been destroyed too many times so you'll no longer see the grave mark you can't really find it around here it is gone and it took us probably about 10 hours of walking the cemetery because I don't know if you can see this cemetery is huge but it took me about 10 hours with multiple people walking every single one of these graves looking for it until I finally found some very old pictures um, very old pictures online of his actual gravesite, and I recognized a couple of the cement walkway patterns. I don't know if you can see any of the cement walkway patterns. Yeah, so I actually recognized where the cement walk pattern was, and that's how I was able to trace down where he is buried. He's still buried here. They just took his tombstone out. Also, one other kind of crazy fact about Dean is that he was a serial killer before serial killers existed. Um, they didn't even have a name for him at the time. They just called him a mass murderer. He influenced people, unfortunately, like John Wayne Gacy and others to become serial killers. So he's kind of the big start of it all that is known of in the United States and really creepy kind of history there. So like I said, if you are more interested in that, you're welcome to go back and watch my other two videos and talking to him. Last time I was out here, I called for him and he made me really, really sick. I already don't feel very good out here, but yeah. So I figured we would come talk to him again though because you guys want to talk to him. So let's go ahead. I'll get the spirit box set up, prepare for the noise. I do not believe in editing out any of the noise on my spirit box sessions because I like everything 100% real, 100% raw. So be careful because it's going to get loud. But let's go ahead and see if we can talk to Dean Coral. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you guys doing today? Ethan and E, are you here? I'm trying to find Dean Coral. Oh, my thing just moved. Maybe it just slipped. Dean, are you out here? I want to talk to Dean Coral. I know he's buried out here. Where's Dean Coral at? Dean, when you're here, say your name for me. Dean, can you come and light this box up? All you have to do is touch it and it'll light up. Whoa. My spirit box like tweaked out. Dean, come light this box this this up for us. It lets me know you're here. Come light it up. You thought you were so powerful in life? Come out here. Pain. I just want everyone to know I will talk to you in a little bit, but right now I just want to talk to Dean Coral. Dean, tell me how many people did you really kill? How many boys did you really kill? I remember when Henley turned you in for 27 of the boys. How many did you really kill, though? How 
how old were you when you when you killed the first boy? People say that you started, I guess, having issues when you were in the military and showing some possible tendencies before you, right before you went in the military. How old were you when you filled the, when you committed your first murder? Was it a boy that you killed first? What was his name? What was the name of your first victim? Come on, you were talking. Talk to me. What was the name of your first victim, Dean? I think you shouldn't even deserve to be buried in the cemetery, Dean. I think you're a piece of crap. Are you trying to make me sick again, Dean? Because I don't feel very good again, Dean. Is this you? Last time I was out here, you made me really, really sick. I was sick for about an hour even after I left. Are you out here trying to make me sick? Speak up. Dean, if that's you, say your name. Light this box up. Why can't you light this ghost meter up? You were so powerful. Light that ghost box up. Are you mad at Elmer Wayne Hindley for killing you and turning you in? What do you do? You get over and you touch it and that's how it lights up. Touch it. No, why not? If you were mad at Elmer Wayne Hindley for killing you, light that ghost box up. Show me how mad you are. And don't say no again. I told you to do it. Do it. Here, I'll even push it away from me. You don't have to come near me. Light that box up. So you forgive Elmer? You forgive Elmer Wayne Henley for what he did to you? You killed my pro my camera. What the hell's wrong with you? I told you to light the ghost box up. Yeah, you did. It's not gonna overheat out here. It's cold. So your cabin and Bolivar Peninsula and the boat shed. Where else did you bury the bodies, Dean? Where else did you bury the bodies of your victims? Did you bury them behind the candy store? You know your mother and father didn't even want to be buried next to you? They're not buried by you. You're going to curse at me now? That's not very polite. 
Well, I'm done with you. Goodbye. Okay, guys. Well, I don't know. I guess I was getting kind of pushy, and so was Dean, too. I don't like it when people cuss at me. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go. And I love you, and I will talk to all of you later. Bye.